Hey guys, this is Doug Hunsaker, and uh, today I just want to talk about the relationship between taper and twist, and uh, and also I'll be talking about a rule of thumb that um, that we just maybe need to be careful with uh, just applying across the board. So uh, I'm going to be looking at a wing today of aspect ratio of eight. So I've got this spreadsheet that I put together. Uh, we've got a aspect ratio of eight. Uh, span of 8, area of 8, mean chord of 1, and then I've set up this spreadsheet so I can type in a taper ratio here and it calculates the root chord and the tip chord. And so I've done that for several different taper ratios here ranging from 0 down to 1 in increments of 0.2. So a taper ratio of 0 is actually a triangular wing with the uh, tip chord equal to 0. Um, and the way, uh, and then I've populated this data here, this is the drag coefficient uh, for each of these taper ratios. Um, these are the drag coefficients as a function of uh, washout here. So I'll just show you how I got this data really quick. Um, I'm using mockup here and uh, basically I just uh, you can go in and add a wing and the default here is a wing of semi-span 4 so um, so a full span of 8 and a chord of 1. So we're just going to use this default wing here, of aspect ratio of 8. And I'm going to turn off the, uh, the parasitic drag for the airfoils. And that will give us a, a purely inviscid solution. So we'll just be looking at the effect of twist on induced drag. Um, okay, and then, and then basically all I've done here is for each wing so right now this is a taper ratio of one and uh, and then I would twist the wing so let's say uh, let's put in uh, three degrees of washout for example and then down here in the uh, in the analysis then I would set a target CL of 0.5 so all of these cases have been run at a, at a lift coefficient of 0.5 and then I can run forces and moments at that lift coefficient and it tells me the drag coefficient. So for example this has a drag coefficient of 0 0.0101 and I would simply plug that into a taper ratio of 1 uh, and then 3 degrees of washout and that's where that 0 0.0101 came from. So I've, I've gone through and populated uh, this table here as a function of taper ratio and washout. And uh, what I'd like to show today is that um, that uh, commonly uh, I've heard the, the rule of thumb used that you should have a taper ratio of about 0.5 and then a few degrees of washout, you know, maybe between 2 and 5 degrees of washout. Well, um, I believe that that rule of thumb actually goes back to the work of Glauert. And, uh, and back in probably the 1920s, uh, Glauert worked uh, looked at the most efficient taper ratio if you could not twist a wing. So um, so let's actually plot this first, uh, the taper ratio on the x-axis, and then if we could not twist the wing, then we have zero washout. And so let's plot the, um, the uh, let's see, the drag here as a function of taper ratio. So we'll do this. All right. So here we've got a plot of of uh, the drag on the on the uh, y-axis and on the x-axis. This is the taper ratio uh, going from zero to one. And you can see if you don't twist your wing, then a taper ratio of 0.4 is about the minimum drag that you can get. You know, you're getting close to that elliptic lift distribution, basically. And so um, that's the taper ratio you want to use if you don't have the ability to twist your wing. And I think that that kind of caught on. And so a lot of people kind of use the, uh, you know, somewhere between 0.4 and 0.6 as a rule of thumb for taper ratio. Um, however, there's a challenge when you do use taper ratio that low, actually. And that is that your tip cord then is, is at a lower Reynolds number than your root cord. And, uh, and that means that it probably has a lower maximum lift coefficient that it can sustain. And so then you have the problem of tip stall. Uh, you know, if, if, uh, if you have a lower max lift coefficient out there, you run the risk of tip stalling. And so 
then what what I hear people doing sometimes is then they add in a few degrees of twist, you know, three to five degrees uh, to take care of that tip stall. Well, let's look at actually what happens out there when we add in twist now um, as a function of this taper ratio. So I've plotted these results here. And uh, you can see, so on the x-axis here, we have uh, the, the degrees of washout. And then on the, the y-axis, we're looking at the drag coefficient. And then I have a different line for each of the taper ratios. And uh, so this, this orange line up here is a taper ratio of 0, so that's the triangular wing. And then it goes you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and, uh, and then this rectangular wing here at the bottom. And so you can see if, um, if you don't have any taper ratio, or excuse me, if, if your taper ratio is 1, so you're looking at a rectangular wing, then at least for this aspect ratio, we probably want to be at a washout at about 4 degrees, and that's going to minimize the drag. Um, however, as we decrease our taper ratio and go down to, let's look at that 0.4 case, this is the purple line here, uh, notice that actually if we add any washout, to a taper ratio of 0.4, that that actually increases the drag. We don't get closer to the elliptic lift distribution because what Glauer found is that that's the closest, uh, the the best taper ratio. If you can't twist your wing, then then you want it. Uh, uh, then you want to be at a taper ratio of about 0.4, and that's uh, you know we can see that that's minimized without any washout uh, right there in the center. But if we add a washout now on top of that, then we increase the drag. And uh, I've also plotted these as a function of percent increase in drag relative to that minimum point out here uh, with the taper ratio of 1. So, so everything here is just a percent increase in drag relative to that point. And so again, if we look at that taper ratio of 0.4, you see that if, if we followed this rule of thumb that, sure, we should have a taper ratio of about 0.4 and then add in maybe 3 or 4 degrees of washout, then we can be up, uh, you know, we're adding three and a half to, uh, to actually almost six percent drag um, just by twisting our wing, and that's that's really unnecessary drag because uh, because we're really not gaining much by twisting our wing unless we have to twist our wing to take care of that tip stall issue. But if we were to just use the taper ratio of one, uh, you can see that twisting at four degrees uh, would minimize our induced drag out here and we don't have the issue of uh, of the lower Reynolds number at the tip than we do at the root. So I just kind of wanted to show these uh, plots to you to give you an idea of these relationships and that that maybe we should just take some time you know as you're designing your wing just take some time to look at twist and how it affects your induced drag because there will be some optimum amount of linear twist that will minimize the induced drag and actually um, you know, we see a lot of wings that have uh, pretty low taper ratios, and granted, they look cool. You know, like uh, you see a wing that has a taper ratio, and and frankly, aesthetically, that looks nice. But uh, but but if you work through this analysis, you find out that actually a taper ratio of one is a really good idea in a lot of scenarios, and uh, and you're able to twist the wing, get really low induced drag coefficients and also uh, mitigate your tip stall problems. So I uh, hope that's been helpful. Feel free to leave uh, questions in the comments below and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Thanks.